So for years, President Trump has insisted that he is not a racist. Listen to what he told me. This was during the 2016 campaign. Racist. I am the least racist person that you have ever met. I am the least racist person. Are you bigoted in any way? I don't think? think so. No, I don't think so. Islamophobic? I'm a person. No, not at all. But when you look at Donald Trump's history, going all the way back to the early 1970s, you'll see that's just not true. My next guest was part of a team at The Atlantic that did just that. So joining me now is Adrian Green. She is the managing editor of The Atlantic and is a co-author of the piece, An Oral History of Trump's Bigotry. And you've got to listen to it. It is amazing. What do you want to do with this piece? We pretty much set out to do two things. We wanted to um, lay out the facts, to document Donald Trump's history with discrimination um, through his actions and through his statements. And then secondly, we wanted to elevate the voices of, you know, the folks that were really impacted. So we spoke to Richard Spencer. We spoke to Yusuf Salam, who was one of the um, so-called Central Park Five. We spoke to um, folks who were involved in his housing discrimination cases. And we really wanted um, to hear about those experiences through their eyes and through their stories. Mm -hmm. Again, it's fascinating. If you got to listen to it, it's on the Atlantic website. Let's start with uh, Trump pushing birtherism, okay? The birtherism conspiracy theory. Uh, it's, it's really what gave him political prominence. Some of his very first comments from 2011. Watch this. He doesn't have a birth certificate, or if he does, there's something on that certificate that is very bad for him. Now, somebody told me, and I have no idea whether this is bad for him or not, but perhaps it would be, that where it says religion, it might have Muslim. <laughs> where did this idea originate? How did Trump help it grow? Uh, I mean, there is no Trump presidency without the birtherism movement, obviously. Um, you can recall um, Seth Meyers and all of the jokes that he made um, <clears throat> during the correspondence dinner and that really inciting Donald Trump to kind of double and triple and quadruple down on the idea that um, President Barack Obama uh, wasn't a real American citizen or that his birth certificate was false. And, and that really kind of gave him the pathway to... Um, you know, come up with these outlandish views in public and, and be heard and be listened to and, and have folks gather around that. You also write about what led Trump to pursue birtherism and uh, his stance against the so-called Ground Zero mosque. Uh, here he is with David Letterman. This is in 2010. Watch. As far as the mosque is concerned, I think it's very insensitive to build it there. I think it's not appropriate. Does this suggest that we are, in fact, officially at war with Muslims? Is that what this suggests? Well, somebody knocked down the World Trade Center. Hmm. Is that consistent with Trump? I mean, maybe not speaking his racism directly, but leaving no doubt what he means? Uh, absolutely. I, I would say that, you know, we, the, the, the piece sought out to track Donald Trump's uh, history and his comments uh, that dealt with communities of color in a really kind of transactional and harmful nature. And this was only, you know, one of many examples over the course of 40 years where he did that. Yeah. You, you know, you mentioned that you talked to Richard Spencer, the man who coined uh, the phrase alt-right and a key organizer of the violent Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. Uh, this is what he told you. He said, uh, there is no question that Charlottesville wouldn't have occurred without Trump. It really was because of his campaign and, it, and this new political and this new potential, excuse me, for a nationalist candidate who was resonating with the public in a very intense way. The alt-right found something in Trump. What does that say ab about the president? Uh, you know, to, to hearken back to the Andrew Gillum quote that, you know, I'm probably misquoting, it's not about whether or not Donald Trump thinks that he's racist, it's whether the racists think he's All racist, All the racists right? think he's racist, yeah. 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 Uh, let's, let's listen again to one of the most infamous moments of the Trump presidency. Here it is. You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. Okay, and this is what Richard Spencer told you about that. He said, Trump in his own way was being honest and calling it like he saw it. I was proud of him at that moment. White nationalists are proud, sort of in the vein of what you said, white nationalists are proud of President Trump. That's what he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he could say it any. I mean, I don't think that he could draw out the the, the relationship and the pride that they uh, that group feels in in Donald Trump's words and his actions and the rhetoric and and the results 
um, that, that that rhetoric has caused in, in the culture, um, they're proud. And, and I think that, that that says a lot. I think, you know, throughout um, talking to people for, for this project, you talk to people like Richard Spencer, who expresses this pride. You talk to folks like Yusuf Salam, who is um, one of the, the men involved in the Central Park Five case. And he says things like, you know, Trump, by taking out the ad against them in 1989, put the put... you took out the ad. The, the, um, his ad ran in May, and they the crime happened in April 19th. They hadn't even started trial yet. Go on. They hadn't even started trial yet, and so so as Salam puts it, he kind of uh, says that Trump put the nail in their coffin that that kind of ensured that they couldn't um, have access to a fair trial. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Adrian. Uh, again, it's a fascinating piece. Agent Green, a fascinating piece in The Atlantic. Uh, I would suggest that all of you um, go and, and click on it. it. It is really fascinating to listen to. Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate it. Thank you.